First up, upgrade the release process. Uh, I don't think there's been any progress within the release process. A uh, JS FFS release is still in progress, uh, and there has been no new GoFS release. Uh, testing infra. So, um, JS FFS shipped. We shipped. We shipped? When? Like just now. Yeah. OK. <laughs> As I checked like 10 minutes ago. OK. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I haven't got, no one's approved the blog post yet from no one knows. Uh, I don't know. There's no blog post yet, but it's been written. The PR just hasn't been published yet, but we definitely okay. ship on NPM and everything. So that is super cool. Um, also, you know, for that, uh, for the release process, um, so I changed the CI uh, to run our, uh, like, test a third party view code um, using a nifty little tool that Hugo wrote um, after Volker found problems with using NPM. Uh, so that is amazing. So we're currently running the tests of a bunch of like internal stuff. Uh, but we're going to add all the people who become early uh, early testers. So that will be automated. In, in there. Okay. Uh, so upgrade testing infra. We had a demo by a rule. I don't think we published the recording yet, um, but it's coming along and it's really cool. Um, yeah, uh, if you want to take a look at that, uh, you can find the actual repo here. No, that's not the repo, that's the code. Notes. Okay, that's the repo for test ground. Um, it's still in progress, but it's, it's coming along. Uh, if you have, or one uh, ask is, we have an issue here about, no, it's a pull request. Yes, identify 10 tests. If you have comments on tests that the test ground should be testing initially, um, please post them here. Uh, garbage collection. Do you have this in progress, but Alex? Shipped. Hmm? Shipped. Wait, shipped? Shipped. Garbage collection shipped? Shipped. Oh, okay. I that means we can remove this. I haven't removed a section from the, the core applications meeting in a while. Hey, we, we uh, can you send an email to shipped? Yep. This, this deserves an email to shipped. I would keep it. I would like extend the scope. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. Subdomain gateways. Lidl updates. Uh, yeah. So like brief uh, update is that we, me, Oli, we've been sort of asynchronously uh, looking at uh, adding support for paths on the dweb link and that's sort of uh, raised a uh, priority for adding support for base 32 in ipns content paths uh, so generally the background on this is that we have cidv1 in base 32 as a rep safe representation for that we can use in subdomains uh, unfortunately uh, the peer ids cannot be for like formally, we do not support uh, base 32 representation of uh, peer IDs. Uh, and I propose a change to leave P2P specs to make that uh, a canonical representation, like basically wrap multi uh, hash uh, in CID. Uh, so that uh, RFC is waiting for a final uh, approval. I think we've addressed most of uh, uh, Raul's concerns uh, and Separately from that, uh, adding support for uh, base 32 in lib P2P and bubbling that up uh, to like go IPFS may take some time. So for now, for this specific case around dweb link, we may look at handling that conversion at the nginx level, unless someone from the Frost team wants to pick up uh, those go uh, changes. 
So that's uh, the update. And uh, separately from that, I uh, Eric asks me to write uh, like more human focused guide around addressing. Basically, like how do you make addresses for gateways that are path or subdomain focused? And how do I construct those uh, native URLs for IPFS colon slash slash? So I wrote uh, just a short guide uh, for docs IPFS IO and it's would appreciate uh, like proofreading because my English is garbage. <laughs> but that's uh, that's all from me. Yep. Okay. Uh, let's see, distributed signaling. Yeah, that uh, is still on hold. Okay, uh, IPNS, um, the IPNS for PubSub stuff is waiting for a view for me. Uh, IPNS over DNS, you go. Yeah, uh, not done yet. Uh, okay. I'll try to finish this week. Okay, uh, migration uh, to multi-hash keys in block store. I don't think there has been much progress there. Um, Alan's been out, so. Mount, Dominic. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, I, I have a PR up for uh, mount uh, an experimental mount thing over the 9p protocol and the read-only support for ipfs seems to be all right there's some bugs with it that still need to be ironed out but besides that um, performance seems all right and just general behavior seems fine so i'm going to keep looking at that and uh, making sure that that's like stable and protocol accurate and then i also have a fork that has ipns write support which is functional at the moment, but also a little bit buggy. Um, there's just something to do with uh, how I'm handling the offset that needs to be fixed, and then um, how publishing is dealt with, so that when we actually make the writes, we commit them back to the key that they belong to. Um, but besides that, progress coming along pretty well. Uh, and that's it for me. OK. Dirk is Dirk. Yes, Dirk is here. Hey, yeah, no, no big updates. Uh, this one. Last week, I, uh, I kind of spent a lot of the week debugging. Firstly, there was a problem with connection management in our simulator. And then on Thursday and Friday, I was trying to track down a bug. And I wrote a ton of tests, but I eventually realized that I was testing the wrong piece of code. So it was good to good way to motivate writing tests. Did those tests pass? They did, yeah. That's great. Um, actually, we could use people in this call to take a look at this issue that I just linked. Um, there's a simultaneous connect funkiness uh, that I introduced a while ago. <laughs> um, uh, basically, uh, the way we currently handle simultaneous, sorry, in Go, we dial, we dial everything at once. Um, and then when we see a connection succeed, we cancel all the other dials. Now, unfortunately, if two people dial each other at the same time. Like you see the inbound connection before you see the outbound connection, which means that you cancel your out, or sorry, you see the inbound connection succeed before you see your outbound connection succeed. You can do it at the same time, which means you cancel your outbound connection and both sides the same side thing. So they see the connection succeed, and then drop. Uh, so um, we're not quite sure the right fix for this. Um, one proposal I have is just like, say, look, like you only connect, uh, cancel connections when you see one of your connections succeed. And you cancel all of your other outbound connections, but you never cancel it based on someone else's email connection because you don't know what they're going to do. Uh, this would, in some cases, lead to multiple connections, but we do have some logic to try to like deterministically pick the best connection to use. Uh, we can prove that logic as well. Um, but comments on this, thoughts on this. If anyone has like prior art on how other systems handle this, this would be wonderful. Um, yeah, this gets even trickier when you deal with actual simultaneous connections. So TCP has this wonderful feature where like if you that both send in packets at the same time. You don't create two connections, you create one connection, and then you both think you initiated the connection, then neither of you act like you, well, you both did initiate the connection. 
um, that's a different bug. Uh, so like the bug I'm talking about, or the bug I was first talking about was much more com or, uh, common than this other bug. So like the TCP simultaneous connect requires you to be precise and like connect at the exact same time. This other simultaneous connect bug requires you to be a bit less precise because like the connection bootstrap process takes time, many round trips. The T like the TCP one, you have to be like within one RTT of each other. It's like usually like within a hundred milliseconds. Uh, the, the bug that's linked here is uh, within like a second or so. It's literally slow. Sometimes. Okay. Sorry for digressing. Uh, well, just on that. Um, yep. Uh, Jacob, I think didn't we didn't I raise an issue about this in JS the PDP and you fixed it? Simultaneous connection. No, so we still have the issue. We, we still have this same issue. We basically did um, like connection consolidation. So once we have established a connection, if we have multiple connections, we'll end up just using, well, we'll switch to just using a single connection. So all of our requests will go through the other one. And then eventually like the other one will naturally get pruned provided connection manager kicks on. Um, but yeah, we're not explicitly prohib prohibiting it. Okay, but you don't have this exact same problem because you don't preemptively kill the connections. Our problem is we preemptively kill all in progress yeah. styles. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, but I, I don't. Oh, yeah, never mind. It's, it's, I think it's less of an issue for JSMP because don't you dial in sequence? Yes, currently. Although that will okay. change with uh, async away because we get abort controls. Oh, okay. Fun times. Okay, I see this massive update for the async await refactor. I am really excited about this. Yeah, so we pushed a bunch of updates to uh, libp2p, um, released several of the modules, including uh, multi-stream select, which will also include um, header consolidation, because JS was being really inefficient and so sending, sending the, the multi-stream packet and then the select packet. Um, we're now doing that in one fell swoop, so that'll be more efficient, which is great. Um, we also started a guide for the JS libp2b internal refactor to kind of break down our approach for that because the internal is so massive that doing it all at once will take forever and we'll end up getting all kinds of conflicts and it's going to be nasty. So we have an approach for splitting that out into its individual components. We also are starting a um, guide to cover uh, streaming intervals. So we're going to link there to like, all the modules that Alan has already created for iterable streams, like it push, pushable, all those will all be linked there. And then we're also going to have a usage guide. And so that's going to be for both contributors and users down the line. And then eventually we're also going to create a migration guide. So take this pull stream code and you can convert this to this uh, async iterables code. So we'll be working on uh, that over the course of this week. And we're kicking more off of the uh, libp2p internals. So, and we should have a few more of the transports done um, today or tomorrow. Uh, Jim? I have a question. I was trying to um, do some JS lib P2P stuff on the weekend and just going through the tutorials and stuff. And I was getting into the, lit, the, the current version of JS lib P2P is ca using callbacks, but then a lot of the dependencies are now converted to, I think, 08 and Right now, if you try to do the tutorials, if you use the current version of libp2p and you pull in the latest dependencies. Yeah, so well. if you go to the JS libp2p um, async uh, await PR, there's one right there on uh, yeah. it's issue 266. We actually have a list of the modules that currently work with the latest version of libp2p um, because uh -huh. we are releasing those out. So if you do run into issues where you're pulling in async modules, then. Yeah, I'm just wondering, this is like anybody pulling the production version of JS lib P2P right now is going to be pulling in, is going to have a broken system right now. So is that intentional or is that? They is shouldn't be. I can check the tutorials because it should, they all should be um, minor bumps to the async away. So yeah, I'm like sure. it, was called, it was called like the um, the P2P TC, TCP transport. It was trying to do listen on that one, but it's, call, it's expecting a callback. But it's, of course, it's incomplete. I, I, I think the issue here is that, uh, like, if you create a new project and you say npm install this new dependency, you're going to get something that requires a single wait. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Um, it's, it's just, it's just sort of it's just broken right now. Like, 
I, I'm just wondering, maybe we should just put like a big warning on everything, like wait for the transition, or is or is there something we can do with the versioning versions to? Um, we have we have actually uh, in the usage uh, important note that we added in that regard a while ago in the readme. Well, that's I mean Jim hit it, so it's obviously a problem. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I downgrade. I downgraded the modules I needed to older ones, and then it worked. But um, yeah, okay. is there any way to like stop people from upgrading in npm? Like mark these things as experimental, looking at the versions. Like uh, we have the same problem in Go, and what we usually do there is like we just say like basically we merge everything as fast as possible and just do everything all at once. So we could go in to... and change all of the npm tags um, to point back latest to. So we can set all the latest for everything that works on the current version, and then we can just put beta on all the new ones. Yeah, I do, I do that because then, like, you could still use the new ones; it just won't pull it when you npm install. Yeah, really I'll go through that, that same um, that on way. all those this week. Yeah. Okay. Thank so you. It me as well when I was trying to do some of the upgrades to JSRK first, where I was just pulling in modules and going, "Oh, cool! Like the test pass, great!" And then try to run it, and nothing works. Sounds like we need tests. <laughs> okay. Um, design review proposals. Um, so Do we have any new ones? Oh, sorry. I'm not playing for JSIPFS as well. Um, so I landed a PR that was like, it was kind of based on the work that Volk was doing when he was uh, trying to upgrade the uh, IPFS repo to the async await version. Um, and it just spiraled massively out of control. And I've basically rewritten all of JSIPFS to be promises and not callbacks. Um, so, uh, you know, Alan's going to get a bit of a surprise when he comes. <laughs> I think it'll be a happy surprise, but... <laughs> oh, I hope so. I hope so. Um, but yeah, so that's quite cool. So that is basically JSRP first kind of done. Um, the only thing that I couldn't do was uh, upgrade um, the peer IDs because the async await version, because uh, basically I have to wait for the P2P to update a new version that uses the... Uh, the next version of peer IDs because the stable version that I can actually use uses like version 0.12 and the async way refactor is 0.13 and then if you have multiple versions of things then then like it stops it starts denying that things are peer IDs when they're actually peer IDs and, and so on and so forth. But once that gets released then then we can get there, stuff. Is there any way in NPM to say there must be a single version of this package? Like to tell NPM like you are not allowed. Can you just like have a Function that like somehow detects? No, you can't. No, no the, whole, the whole the magic is that you always get the version that you want. Maybe not the version that you should have. But. No, no, but like like, like the, the, there's no way of saying like look like there cannot be two versions of this. So the way this works in Go is like you can have multiple major versions. You are not allowed to have multiple minor versions. It just can't happen. No, okay, that's annoying. Oh, well. uh, anything else? Design review proposals. Anything else this week? I'm still delinquent on my uh, Unix OS 1.5 spec, which will probably come out this week. I have a plane ride, so I'll try to hit then. Okay, blockers asks. Anyone blocked on something? Need a review? Need to talk to someone? Need some coffee? Okay. Uh, parking lot. Or sorry, I guess questions first. No questions. Uh, parking lot. Hugo. Yes, just to, to let you know, the last week, Web Browser's team um, went to, to Malta to hang out a little bit, do some road mapping and stuff. And we did also some hacking. And from that hacking came out uh, a new browser data store uh, with around 50% uh, improvements on adding and getting. Um, and also, uh, we added support to UnixFS to do batching, uh, which uh, also gives us around 50% improvement. I'm still running proper benchmarks to, to validate these numbers and to also make sure if we can compound the two, at least in the browser, and get 100% improvement in the browser. I'll update on that. I'm concerned. I, I remember hearing something about how JSIPFS was as fast as GoFest in some ways with adding. Does this make it significantly faster? Than the browser. 
Oh, that was on on Node. Okay, got it. Okay. No, yeah, but the Unix, uh, the, the the batching is is for Node and, and browser. It improves both. Oh, okay. So it, I can still be work. scared. There was a little bit faster for a five gigabyte data set, and that to the point where it kind of negated goes like startup speed advantage. So got it. Okay. The speed crown is still on Go's head for the time being. For the time. <laughs> for now. Okay. Um, that covers everything. Uh, please leave your async updates uh, below. Uh, and I guess we can end five minutes early unless someone else has something else to talk about. Oh, see you all. Thank you. Bye.